Okay, this talk is about lipoprotein little a. Is it a monster or a mouse? Is it a big deal or not a big deal? It definitely does increase your risk of having a heart attack, okay? But it's, its amount of increase in risk is not that big and you can, you can handle it the same way you would handle preventing coronary artery disease. Okay, um, so again, you usually will pronounce it lipoprotein little a. You can write it in parenthesis. It's made in the liver. It's also made along with acute phase reactant proteins made by the liver in response to inflammation. Um, LPA, it's really just an LDL particle plus this little LPA protein. So it looks like a baseball. The LDL, and the entire baseball is the LDL cholesterol particle. They have a signaling protein on them called ApoB the ApoB protein, and that's just like the seams of the baseball, okay? And then attached to the seams of the baseball is the lipoprotein little a protein. So it's just one protein attached to the baseball, and it's attached by a disulfide bridge, so that's SS for two sulfurs. Disulfide as in two sulfurs attaches to the ApoB protein, and that's it. Part of the sequence of amino acids in LP little a mimics that of plasminogen. It's uh, related to the clot dissolving system in the blood and it inhibits it. Things with similar sequences sometimes can be like almost like a competitive inhibitor type of effect. So it inhibits the lysis, the breaking up of fibrinolysis it's called, the breaking up of clots so it tends to make the blood more prone to clot. Remember atherosclerosis is just a blood clot so anything that makes the blood more likely to clot will increase the risk of atherosclerosis. That's the key thing to know about it. Okay, um, whatever level of people have is tends to be supposedly fixed for life. But as usual, when conventional medicine says something, they don't include uh, diet. And, and the reality is you can lower it. It depends on the paper you read. Some say in the ballpark 15, 16% with a low fat vegan diet. Uh, Jeff Nelson at VegSource went on a fasting thing over at True North and he dramatically lowered his LPA. Um, but in general, it is considered in the conventional medical world to not be changeable, that the, from once you're five years old, it's fixed for the rest of your life. And it is considered an independent risk factor for coronary artery disease. Uh, when the levels are over 30 milligrams per deciliter, it's associated with two times increased risk of coronary artery disease, okay? Um, sometimes it'll also be measured in nanomoles per liter, and this is thought to be a better measurement. So different labs will, will list the measurement in different ways, and they'll also give you their scale. Um, so that's the key thing to know about it. It's prothrombotic, and anything prothrombic, thro prothrombotic increases the risk of atherosclerosis. Well, atherosclerosis increases the risk of coronary artery disease or having a heart attack, getting an arrhythmia due to uh, lack of blood supply to the heart muscle, uh, ischemia-induced arrhythmia. Okay. By the way, I made up a, a proverb. You know a proverb in the Bible, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom? I would say fear of ischemia is the beginning of health wisdom. You know, fear of lack of blood flow. Ischemia means lack of blood flow. All right. PAD is peripheral arterial disease. just means atherosclerosis in the legs. Okay. Calcific aortic stenosis. So that's a big, strong association with LPA. Uh, congestive heart failure, which is associated with atherosclerosis, possibly with increased risk of stroke. That's associated with atherosclerosis and with coronary artery disease. Okay, you get a myocardial infarction, heart doesn't work correct, clot forms in the heart, tosses it up the brain, stroke. Okay, AFib, form a clot, tosses it up the brain, stroke. All right, so here's where it gets interesting from the point of view of the pharmaceutical companies. 20% of the population is described as being, even 25%, according to some studies, described as being high in LPA, meaning at increased risk for clotting in the blood and atherosclerosis. Well, what this means is tens of millions of patients are uh, potentially positive. So, of course, the drug companies say, oh, we need to screen the families, screen the families. What they're going to do is create tens of million patients. Imagine, you know, United States population, let's say it's 400 million, okay? 20% of that would be 80 million people, okay? And you got the patients that present with coronary artery events, you screen their families. All of a sudden, you got tons of people, and what the conventional medicine wants to do is now put them all on drugs. Most common drug being used to treat it is a statin, which is a little bit of a joke because statin actually increases LPA a little bit, but they think it compensatorily decreases LDL so much that it's therapeutically beneficial. By the way, I went to the best cardiologist in my area, real smart guy, AOA. AOA means top 10% of your class. And he also, you know, textbook author, 
I go, what do you what do you recommend for this LP little pro lipoprotein A little A? And he goes, yeah, I don't really even know what to do with it. And he goes, I just try to get their LDL down as much as possible. You know, the other stuff, niacin might lower it, but doesn't reduce uh, mortality and morbidity that much. It's not really that worth it. So he goes, I just try to get their LDL down. Other uh, books and so-called experts are talking about apheresis procedure. Sounds crazy to me. Um, and something else, this other drug called PCSK9 inhibitors. On this one video, I saw this real fat guy, and he's a lipidologist. I thought that was funny. That's typical conventional medicine. The guy's totally fat and out of shape, probably has significant atherosclerosis problems, prediabetes, hypertension, and he's the one that's called the expert teaching other people about all these medications. I thought that was funny. Okay, um, basically, if you control your other coronary artery disease risk factors, the patients tend to do well. There's studies showing that as well. I don't have time to go into all the studies. I just work full day every day this week, but I, I am summarizing for you what is known. And if you double check on this, you'll see it's true. Um, what I think is funny, like how would I describe it at this point? A tempest in a teapot, meaning that that the drug companies are stirring it up. Of course, they love this. This is great for them. They could potentially create, you know, 80 million, 100 million patients just like that. You know, that's why the drug companies are so profitable. Okay, and what's the smartest thing you do? Go low fat, low sodium vegan like the Esselstyn diet with no oils. That might lower your LPA and it certainly lowers your LDL so much, lowers your body weight, likely to improve your blood pressure, preventing coronary artery disease, prevent, helping to prevent diabetes, that that will dramatically lower your risk. This guy is Bob Harper. He's a famous trainer. He was on something like The Biggest Loser TV show or something. He had a myocardial infarction where he essentially so-called died. He was defibrillated, resuscitated, brought back to life, okay? And um, he has high uh, lipoprotein little a, okay? This is just a little... Uh, graphic showing stirring up a tempest in a teapot. Big Pharma wants everybody to know about us, try to make money of them. So what I'm basically saying is don't be a chump. Get your act together. Um, here's just a, a, a little bit of a diagram showing, um, you know, again, same thing like a baseball is the LDL particle, disulfide bridge converted, connecting to the lipoprotein little a. And the, the different subunits of it are sometimes called Kringles. It's named after a pastry at the grocery store. There's more to know about LPA, but it's not going to help you. If I learn something about it interesting in the future, I will make another video. I'm just giving you the quick summary of this thing. And what am I doing about mine? I got mine back. Mine was a little high, not real high. I don't know, depending on how you, you categorize. Mine wasn't high enough to be in the high risk, but it wasn't in the lowest possible risk either. Um, so what, what do I gain from this? What do I, what would I say should be in your mind's eye? You should say to yourself, well, gee, you might have a high lipoprotein little a, and I guarantee you probably got some unfavorable anastomotic patterns, like you might have bilateral persistent fetal uh, posterior communicating arteries in your brain that increase your risk of a stroke. So nobody knows for sure what you got. There's little, little anastomotic patterns of blood vessels all over your body. The smart thing is to say to yourself, who knows, I might have one of these things, so I'll be as careful as possible to minimize my risk factors. Remember what I just said, the proverb, fear of ischemia is the beginning of health wisdom. And I talk to a lot of patients, and in my experience, most patients, they screw up because they tend to go half-ass on everything. Just like the herbivore mentality, the safe place to be a herbivore is in the middle of the pack. And what I mean by that is they'll say, oh, I'm cutting down on oil, I'm cutting down on meat, I'm cutting down on dairy. And they don't realize as you're getting older, you're getting more fragile. And unless you really get your act together, you're still going to be at high risk. You know, just like we said a million times, you don't tell an alcoholic you can drink on the weekend. You don't tell a smoker you smoke on the weekend. You stop doing those things. So the proper attitude towards health is to say, well, gee, almost all these patients I see, the vast majority of them, they're after 60, they're cognitively impaired, they're messed up, and they just go downhill and they never get better. Never get better. Conventional medicine can't cure any of these chronic diseases. It's kind of a big joke. Just hooks them on drugs, takes their money, and then they die prematurely, okay? So what I'm saying is, my attitude is, look, you mean all I got to do is eat this low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet and I can probably avoid all these miserable, terrible problems and, and early onset cognitive impairment? It's a great deal. I'll do it. I'll do it. That's the right attitude. Okay, believe me. You see all these poor, pathetic people just suffering all day long, and then you talk to them, and most of them don't get it. And what I'm almost saying here, too, and this kind of reminds me of C.S. Lewis in his book, Mere Christianity. He almost says, and it was another author. Gosh, it was a, a Spanish guy. He says, you know, you have to realize you're screwed. You're shipwrecked. And I would say, you know, effed. Okay, 
once you understand that you're kind of effed if you don't get your act together, there's a big motivator, okay? And that's basically what I see. As far as I can see, I've been a doctor over 30 years, and all I see is disaster after disaster. Con conventional medicine, you know, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Take this pill, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill. <laughs> like, look at statins. They're, you know, mitochondrial inhibitors, not to mention other problems they cause, potential worsening risk of diabetes. All right, they elevate LPA sometimes a little bit. So what I'm saying is, once you realize, as far as I know, this is the best you could do. Low fat, low sodium, vegan, no oils, etc. Um, it's your best chance. You know, you can do whatever you want. But as far as I know, that's the best I could tell you. Starch-based, vegan diet, all this stuff.